Hi everybody, Jonathan here with yet another Twin Motion video on the new preview version, preview 2 of Twin Motion. Now this is going to be super exciting. If you haven't seen this video, make sure you watch it to the end. There's some amazing features that you're going to want to see. We've got the new Sketchfab integration, we've got high resolution images and panoramic images and loads of other nice little touches and features as well. As I say, I think you'll learn a lot from watching this video, but I certainly enjoyed making it for you. Thanks for watching as usual and please hit that subscribe if you're new around here. It really helps the channel and I really appreciate it. Enjoy. Thank you. And we're going to be looking at the new 2022.2 preview version today. Some amazing new features that have just been released. All you need to do to get this is go along to the Twinmotion website from the Epic Launcher and you'll notice that all the different versions of Twinmotion are going to be listed. Um, you can obviously uninstall some that you're not using, the old ones, but notice that I've got the preview version. Now you get the trial if you haven't actually got a paid for version, but let's just go ahead and launch this new version. So it will basically launch up with a new uh, splash screen and we're going to look at some of the most amazing new features of this new version. So one of the major new features of Twinmotion 2022.2 Preview 2 is that Sketchfab has now been integrated. Now if you've seen my earlier video on this, I did a dedicated video all over this, um, then you'll understand this already. But for the purpose of the video, I'll just kind of summarise. So basically Epic Games have acquired uh, Sketchfab, that means they're part of the business. Um, the Epic Games have a habit of doing this, they kind of look around at the market and acquire the market leaders in the business. It has absolutely hundreds and thousands of beautiful assets. So here's just a little example, okay, and you can see it's just playing around in the window there. Let's just hop into the Sketchfab website. So that's all you need to do, just uh, look for the Sketchfab website here, and you'll see just absolutely incredible amounts of assets of all different types. Um, the really nice thing is I think these really, really complement the uh, Quicks or Megascans assets. Um, quite a few of these are homemade, if you like, by hobbyists, so some of these are going to be a bit more uh, cartoony, for example. But, you know, you'll just be blown away by the sheer um, sort of amount of assets that are available. Apparently there's 700,000 of them, and because the community make these, the only thing you do need to be aware of, uh, you must make sure that you actually kind of look at the credits, and basically some of these will deserve uh, credits to the author who created them. So that's fine, if you just look into the information you can see everything about the file size and the number of geometries as well. But I really, really like the, uh, the viewer they've got, and this saves a lot of time, in that you can basically preview the asset before you bring it in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's see if we can get this into Twin Motion. I don't know why I need this, but I like the look of it. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to go into Twin Motion, and I've just got a little project on the go that I did uh, a few years ago for a big master plan I thought would be quite fun to have as the backdrop. Um, one of the other things I wanted to do was test out the uh, high resolution renderings. Now, on a big project like this, that's going to be very important. What we're going to do then, we're going to open up the uh, libraries, we're going to go to Sketchfab and well, I'm just going to try pasting in the thing that I just copied from the Sketchfab website and wow, look at that. I've immediately found the asset I was looking for. Again, if I did want to, I could actually click onto it and open it in Sketchfab, okay. Do make sure that you have a look at the credits, okay, so the author here must be credited. But otherwise, you can just go into uh, the website and basically copy the required credits. That's very straightforward. All I need to do to get the asset is click on the download button. That will take a few seconds to start downloading, depending on your internet speed. And I'd really recommend that you also click the favorites button, because very rapidly you're going to download lots of assets and they will get a bit lost in your system. So once we've done that, we can click onto our favorites, for example, and let's get rid of the filter there. And you can see that I've already downloaded a bunch of assets when I made my previous video. So in order to use the new item, we just simply drag and drop. You'll get a little kind of widget or helper uh, where it kind of creates the object as it actually drags it in. Now do bear in mind the very first time you drag it in, it takes a long time. Now here's another issue. Um, some of the assets were created very, very large and they come in the wrong scale, but that really isn't a huge problem. Just drop down into transform, have a look at the scale 
and basically just rescale it down. They're normally 10, 100 or 1000 times too big or too small. So I'm just going to put down uh, 1% and see if that works. One and one. And that looks a lot better. So I'm pretty confident that thing is to scale now. And we can kind of use this uh, rather strange asset in our model as long as we give the author a credit. So, you know, you're going to see there's just an absolute ton of uh, assets. There's another one that's come in way too big. Let's scale that one down as well. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, and I guess, I guess this is all to do with the units that have basically um, been put into the file. Okay, so rather strange place for a sofa to be, but there we go. We were just trying to show you how this uh, Sketchfab integration works. So yeah, do explore the Sketchfab libraries. Let's turn the favorites off and get back into that. And a really nice little tip here is you can open up the window really, really wide and basically start to search through some of those assets. There's just some incredible assets. I would really recommend you spend some time here. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that if you import the asset um, as a collection, at the moment, it all comes through as one big object. And that's really to keep it nice and simple in twin motion. So it does mean that you can't edit the individual rocks. Um, maybe in the future, there'll be an option where you can actually edit these things as well. Do, do bear that in mind. So really what you're looking for is maybe more individual assets. I also really like the way you can see the file size before you actually bring them in. So do bear in mind, um, you know, when you bring these in, they can be quite heavy. So concentrate on the file size, make sure it is an asset that you're actually using in your scene before you kind of load up your scene with very, very heavy assets. Okay, so if you want to find out a bit more about the Sketchfab in a bit more detail, do check out my other video, which was specifically on this. Now, the next new feature I want to show you is very, very exciting indeed, and is the ability to be able to render absolutely massive images up to 64K, which is just mind blowing, without sort of blowing your graphics card. So what I'm gonna do is basically click onto a preset image. You can see I've got some nice images of this uh, project. By the way, this was a project I did back in about 2006 for a big master plan of uh, Wood Wharf, which was the next stage of Canary Wharf. And it was all modeled in Vectorworks if you're interested and then brought into Twin Motion uh, just really last year for the Twin Motion competition. So I just thought it was nice to revisit a really old project that was modeled many moons ago and take a, a sort of fresh look at it, if you like. Okay, so what we're gonna do is basically, let's set up a brand new view for this. I'll probably render a couple of these. We're gonna go over to the More section and we're gonna go to uh, Format. So you'll notice at the moment, I can basically choose different custom sizes. But if I go into More, you'll notice there's a new setting uh, called High Resolution. Now what that means is I can click into uh, the high resolution, turn this on, and basically I will be able to create absolutely massive renderings. Let's go for uh, 1600 pixels by, six, sorry, 16,000 pixels by 16,000 pixels, for example. Let's do, actually let's change the proportion there and do 10,000 to get a nice panoramic image. Okay, so let's just kind of like search for the view that I really want to show. Let's get down and maybe get down a little bit more eye level. That looks really cool. Um, so let's go ahead and render this image out. And I'll be interested to see how long it actually takes. Um, but while I'm doing that, I will actually pop up my statistics panel. You can see that this is a big model. Okay, I'm pretty much pushing the RAM side. And it's giving me lots of statistics about the model as well. At the moment, I'm in a slightly kind of lower quality setting, but you can see it still looks really, really great. And there's a lot of animation and movement. Now, I really wanted to push it. This is the biggest scene that I've ever created. So let's go for it. I'm gonna to go to uh, my images and just load in that final one that I've just set up there. I'm not gonna do anything else. And I'm just gonna click Start Export. And let's just put uh, that into a new folder. Okay, so um, I just want to try one more thing and then we'll review these images. So this time, what I'm gonna do is turn on the high resolution. Let's go and render, um, maybe not quite as massive as the last one, because this time I'm gonna do a path trace rendering. And I'm interested to see the difference in time between a path trace rendering and how the high resolution works with that. So let's just kind of finalize our view here. Um, that looks really cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's turn the camera setting on. Just going to kind of down the vignetting a bit. 
try parallelism yeah i think that looks good on an image like this where you want all your verticals nice and vertical so let's go for it um we're going to put the path tracing on and i'm just going to go for uh fairly medium settings on this that's reasonable to give it a chance let's go to the export tab and let's load in our new image number 16. okay so this is 8000 by 5000 pixels that's pretty big Let's just click start export and save that off to the, the same folder. We'll come back in a minute and review and I'll be showing you the time of both images that they took to render. In fact, I can tell you that the previous one took 2 minutes 57 as you can see here. And then uh, once we've rendered this path trace run, that will kind of inform us how long it takes as well. It looks like it's only going to take about 3 minutes, which is pretty amazing for this high resolution image. Um, so we'll come back and review these in a second. Now I just wanted to take this opportunity to highlight my book, Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twin Motion. This is a beautiful 320 page fully illustrated PDF and ebook that's available for you to buy in uh, on my store. And it features some of the best featured artists from all over the world. So if you want to learn more about Twin Motion, take a look at the book and I really hope you enjoy reading it. And thanks for watching. Okay, so our image has now uh, finished rendering. As you can see, the statistics panel is incredibly useful. It reports we've got 5 minutes 13 seconds. Um, it definitely gives me a bit of a warning that I'm maxing out my GPU settings, but you know, look, we're okay. We're still working and we're still able to use this beautiful path tracer. So let's go down and just review these images in the uh, Explorer. Here you can see I've got my non-path traced image. That was 16,000 pixels by 10,000 pixels, 240 megabyte image. Double click it, wow, look at that. Let's just let that load in for a second. And here's the beauty. You've got like almost infinite amount of detail. You just keep zooming in. Look at that incredible detail until it starts to pixelate and then you know you've gone beyond 100%. But basically, that's the beauty of these high resolution images. So if you're rendering these for advertising, billboards or something like that, um, this is going to be a really, really nice new feature in Twin Motion. And the fact that rendered in like, you know, a couple of minutes is just mind blowing to me. Let's have a look at this one. This was the path traced image, 5 minutes, 13 seconds. Oh wow, I'm so impressed by the quality of the path tracing in this scene. Um, this, as I say, was a project I did years ago. I really wish I'd had this capability. But if we kind of zoom in, you'll see what the path tracer does. It does what it needs to do. It does these absolutely amazing reflections, uh, environmental reflections, things like the sky domes as well and the lighting. Just looks absolutely fantastic. So you kind of got this like infinite level of uh, resolution. I could have gone higher. Um, it just would have taken a bit longer to render. But this was 8,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. So, you know, really, really good. This would print um, a, a1 size, no problem at all. So what a fantastic new feature, the ability to basically go into your images and set those to be extremely high resolution. One other feature I just wanted to mention as well, uh, I'm not sure I mentioned this before, you don't always have to render the PNG files, you can actually go straight to uh, JPEG as well, and also EXR is another file format as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the community produce uh, with these amazing new sort of rendering capabilities that we have, both the path tracing and the extreme high resolution images, literally up to 64K. So, yeah, let's kind of have a look at this and see what the images uh, are produced. We'll just let that render up again. You can see it refining now. By the way, if you go to low settings, it's pretty quick. It's actually pretty workable. Um, I'm using a 2080 Ti graphics card on this particular computer. Um, obviously, a 3090 would be even better, a bit more uh, performance-wise. But I'm really happy with the performance I'm getting on this computer, which is a couple of years old. Okay, so the next new feature I just want to highlight is the fact that with panoramas, we now also have the ability to render those at extremely high resolution. Um, so the way you do this, you basically set your camera up in the position you would like. And when you go to the export tab and load the panorama in, so let's go to our panorama here and click down to more you'll notice that you actually have um, not only different formats for the panoramic image as well but you have the different resolutions and here's the new feature right up to 16k 
which is absolutely amazing. So what I'm going to do is render a couple of 16K panoramas for you, and then we'll come back and review those uh, in a second as well. Okay, so our panoramic image has finished, and basically we can review this just by popping into the settings. Um, you can see that I had to convert it to a JPEG file, but if I do, uh, I can basically open it in a free viewer. I've got this little free viewer for the panoramics. And what's amazing is just look at the amount of resolution again in this panoramic. So with the 16K, um, you know, you get absolutely tons of resolution, really, really high quality. And I guess if you were viewing this in a headset or something like that, you would have a really kind of crystal clear experience as well of the image. So a bit of a tearing as it goes through, I can see that, but that's probably the viewer more than the image itself. So what do you think guys? I think this is a really nice addition to Twinmotion, the panoramic 16K ability to render absolutely massive panoramics as well. I'm really looking forward to having a look at how these work on the Twinmotion cloud as well. Another new feature that's been highlighted is the ability to now import lights from the DirectLink and other software. Now, Vectorworks isn't actually listed, but I wanted to try this out and see if it would work. So what I've done here is make a very simple room uh, with a couple of point lights and some spotlights. And as you can see, it doesn't look very good in Vectorworks at all at the moment, but that's fine. I'm going to put a ceiling on. It's just a very simple example. I'm going to go and export this as the Unreal Datasmith format. Let's go ahead then. Let's export this. Let's just call this uh, room three. Okay, you'll notice it exports the Datasmith file, only takes a second or two, and then into Twinmotion, what we can now do is click Import, go to Geometry, and we'll click Open. So let's just go back to the correct room. Here is the uh, Datasmith file with the assets in there. Let's click Open, and of course, let's keep the hierarchy, as is usually the case. So when we import, we'll click over and click F to fit to our room. Now, interesting. I immediately can see there is some lights in the model. Okay, so let's just move into the space. And obviously it's very bright at the moment. Um, if I open up the room, you can see the geometry of the room. And here you can see the basically spotlights and point lights. What I've noticed is if you select them both together, then you can change them both together. So let's drag the intensity of those down and do the same just with the spotlights to begin with. Now the interesting thing is, um, yes they are coming through with very very high intensities to start with, but the beauty is the lights are there and we can adjust these. So it's really really nice the fact that Twinmotion is now supporting uh, these lights from different sort of CAD software, and give it a kind of reddish glow perhaps. Let's put the point lights on as well, just slide that slider up. It'd be nice if the intensities were a bit less bright when they first start out. But, you know, you can understand perhaps why that's working in the way it does. So as you can see, these new Vectorworks lights have come across really, really quite nicely. And we're free to modify things like the uh, color values and so on as well. Let's just put the shadows on. Now, you'll notice that I'm just going to drag in um, a couple of items of furniture to sort of prop out this room just very, very rapidly. And a nice little tip here is I've basically used my favorites in order to um, basically rapidly give me access to some of the items I want. Drag that one in and let's just spin this around. So you see how quick this is? Um, it's only a really basic little example. But what I wanted to do was click onto the path tracer to show you how rapidly we can create an absolutely stunning room from Vectorworks just using the lights that are coming in pretty much from the Vectorworks model. Of course, we've got a little bit of light coming in uh, through those windows as well. So we can adjust that time of day. Let's just do that slightly. Remember, it's always better to work without the path tracer on when you're actually working. Um, you get a much sort of nicer kind of clue as to what's going to happen. Then when you click the path tracer, um, it will kick in with a much nicer quality rendering. So I'm really impressed by the new lighting import into Twinmotion um, in 2022.2, the preview version. And it's definitely something that I know many of my clients and designers will be very, very pleased about having this lighting import as well. Okay, so there's really just two more kind of small, but you know, useful features that I want to highlight. So the first one is that they've improved the little widget. So we've now got these nice colored axes and that's really cool because basically that chimes in. Let's go to transform with the X, the Y and the Z. So it's just a good little reminder really for you 
when you're manipulating an object and sort of sliding it around, um, which axis you're actually moving on. It's a very small improvement, but a really welcome one as well. Then the final improvement is if I click the G key, you'll notice I'm turning my lights on and off. Okay, but the most important thing is the icons for the different types of lights are actually different. So if we go back to our lighting, uh, for example, if I add an area light here, just move that up a bit here. You can see, let's just reduce the intensity of that a little bit here. Uh, maybe put some shadows on. Um, let's put the path tracer on. Now, you know, I've literally created this scene in a few minutes from Vectorworks and just brought it in with the new gizmos, the new lighting. I think that's fantastic. And this is on low settings. So let's just crank up the settings of the path tracer to something a bit higher. And let's go full screen just to get a nice little kind of end to the video. You can see the new gizmo plus the new icons for the lighting. This is going to make twin motion much easier to use. Um, going forward and I like all these little improvements they make a big day-to-day -day difference okay you can see I've done a little bit more work to my scene just using those new uh, fantastic colored gizmos and the new icons for the lights and um, by the way if I do look into the lighting up here you'll notice the icons also feature up in the uh, scene graph as well which is very very useful but let's just pop into full screen and with a click of a button R I can go into my path tracing settings and let's just let that render up in medium path tracing. As I say, it looks a bit noisy, but wait until the denoiser kicks in and that's gonna be a pretty stunning image for, you know, just a couple of moments work when I was in my CAD software at Vectorworks. So really, really nice. Um, I really like the lighting and I love the fact these new lights are importing. So what do you think, everybody? I think this is a really welcome feature. I'm just gonna render this one out at high resolution and finish off this video. Okay, so our uh, high resolution image of this little room has rendered out. I'm kind of pleased with it, but I really just, again, love to be able to zoom in and just look at that level of detail. So this was an 8,000 pixel by uh, 5,000 in terms of resolution. There's just so much detail in there. Get these lovely reflections as well with that path tracer. So fantastic addition and looking forward to getting stuck into that and doing a lot more videos for you soon. Thanks for watching everybody. See you soon. Bye bye.